going on everybody what is going on i am excited to be back once again with a hot takes episode i am lawrence henderson president and ceo of boss llc and what is hot hot stands for humility openness and transparency and in leadership that is what i strive for and anybody that i bring to these airways audio visual and all those other things that's the agreement we make before they come before you. And so today I am honored and I have the privilege of having a conversation with the one and only Wednesday Furman. What's going on Wednesday? Ooh, the one and only. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lawrence, how are you today? It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, my absolute pleasure. And y'all, me and Wednesday go back not like babies and pacifiers, but <laughs> a couple years back to serving uh, in church and community and just supporting each other in our roles as HR leaders and training development leaders, coaching, all that other, all those other things. And, and so today, Wednesday, what is it that you're doing? Where are you in the world these days? And Ooh, so we definitely grew up together professionally um, yeah, we the did. last few years <laughs> and uh, have seen different uh, seasons, as we call it. And um, I am now Lawrence over at Zoo Atlanta, the best place in Atlanta, um, as the VP of HR. And we have a million things going on good there. And um, I'm quite happy. Um, I've been there since uh, July of 2022, right after COVID. That is amazing. That's amazing. And, and today, and it's funny, when I we reconnected um, at the top of this year uh, at yeah. an executive leadership social as we were before we were starting connecting the dots. Shout out to, to that event being an amazing success Ooh, this year as well. Um, and which you were at the original one. First one, 2018, <laughs> um, and and I, we were we were uh, reminiscing over some pictures, and and I can recall y'all. There's there's relationships, and yesterday I kind of kind of made a comment and connecting dots about you know people in your life, reasons, seasons, and, and lifetimes, and relationships, and there are those leaders who who imprint on us in, in a very good way. Um, and from the beginning, Wednesday has you as a leader, like you've had this authentic presence and 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 just in the way you engage and it's not again in what you say but it's how you are how you are how and how you're just your being in your essence and so today's conversation y'all around authentic leadership i did not select that that was <laughs> wednesday that's how you know like this is something that she embodies and is just not only passionate about but is a practitioner in authentic leadership and when when you just hear that in it, the words authentic leadership wednesday what does that even mean to you well you know what thank you for uh, for the compliments lawrence but let me kind of start with how i was grown how i grew up as a leader right um i was taught that names are important people love their names right and they identify with their names so mine being wednesday it was important for me just out the rip when i first started as a green hr journalist that people knew how to spell my name for for the for first, okay, um, because it is a little different from the day. But then when I go out in the world and I'm at a table, um, if I'm in my office, I ask the person, what's your name? Because I'm calling that person by their name. I'm making sure I'm getting their name spelled right if I'm sitting behind my desk. So it really started with making sure that that people connection started with people's names, just like with mine. Um, you could not fathom what people would call me in terms of the misspelling of or mispronunciation of my name, right? So that's really where it started in terms of that connection and um, connecting with people authentically. You there there is something inside of there, y'all. And 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 I'm a huge I'm a stickler for names as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, and, and so and then I can recall the, it's early. It's like, I didn't know how much of a thing it was for me yeah. until I was in the army and my first duty station and the leader was going around asking people, you know, their names and all the rest of the things like that. And I said, Lawrence, 
Mm-hmm. And not even five minutes later, called me Larry. Uh, see? And I proceeded to not respond. Mm-hmm. And he kept saying, Larry, Larry. And I'm like, and then he says, he says my last name. He says, Henderson. I was like, yes, sir. He was like, I've been calling you. I was like, oh, I don't know who you were calling, sir. You were calling somebody named Larry. And he looked at me. Yep. Never got my name wrong again. That's right. <laughs> and, That's and, right. But, but, but in that, if you talk about like what you were describing, there's a level of self-awareness because some people can get caught up in that. Some people are like, oh, you know, it's just, it's what they mm-hmm. call you. And, and but, but there's something in that as you think about being aware of who you are, having that sense of self, like what makes that important as it pertains to being a practitioner of authentic leadership? Um, it's, it's a characteristic of authentic leadership, right? You lead with being self-aware. And when you are self-aware, you don't have to hide behind what people's um, perception might be of you, right? You know your values, you know your purpose in life, and you walk in that. Right. So in your example, Lawrence, Larry, Deb, Deborah, you know, it, and we sometimes come accustomed to those shortness unless you correct that person. Right. So walking in, um, walking in your purpose, knowing your values starts with that um, authentic leadership as well as some of those characteristics. Um, so you don't just accept someone calling you Larry when your name is not Larry, <laughs> you know, clearly. So um those are just some characteristics of the of authentic leadership purpose, mm-hmm. understanding what your purpose is, understanding what your true and strong values are and leading by those period. Yeah. So you don't accept the Larry, you are Lawrence. 100%. I got to, and, and, and if, and if I'm being facetious and I, and, and I want to be a little smart aleck, I tell them it's on my birth certificate. Mm-hmm. So that's the name I go by. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so, and, and the funny thing is, and there was another thing I used to say, um, and there's a, it's probably something that I, I probably say and do more than anything when it comes to the way I engage, particularly this of uh, being authentic, that um, and I was like, you can't play like when people do certain things like, you don't you can't play with me like that. We don't have the relationship. Yeah. And yeah. And, and there is a level of relational transparency mm-hmm. when it comes to mm-hmm. how you engage another person. And, and so. Mm-hmm. Over the years, right? Like, because again, a lot of times people can catch these conversations w- from where we are um, mm-hmm. in, in our journey with this as 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 a being thing. How do people? What are some practical things you've done over the years to become more and more comfortable um, as a leader in enhancing your relational transparency, whether it's in your organization or just in the community in general? Great question. Um, I'm going to tell you that I'm still learning myself as a leader, right? We're all always evolving. But um, one of the things also was being compassionate. Everyone that you meet is struggling with something, right? And um, being having a compassion heart is also something that individuals should lead with in terms of being authentic. So I would also say that um, I don't meet a person who I don't consider to have some sort of connection. The person in the grocery store, the person serving my meal, the person that's actually, you know, taking out the trash. I don't care if it's with my immediate manager. Um, having a compassion heart for me also is a part of that authenticity. And um, knowing that if I need it, I'm there in the best way possible. And I'm showing up in that way. So th- those things are also important to me. Did that get to your question? Yeah, it did. And and the follow up is because there's a thread there that yeah. I that I believe I'm hearing, and okay. because there there's it's almost a a moral being like being a good person yes. and, and being able to show up well in that relationship, like there like that in the complexity of the business world and the navigating the spaces of being moral, being ethical in the way that we engage just our work in each other. Like, mm-hmm. what are some examples like of the things you've done to grow a positive, impactful organizational structure around this thing we're having a discussion about today? Good question. Um, 
So one of the things I do is when I join an organization, I've been with some great organizations, right? One of the first things I was taught was to do a leader assessment, right? A simulation. And those type of the simulations are done with your teams where you do a couple of minutes, maybe 15, 20 minutes with your team. And then the team will ask you specific questions and then you come together as one to review those particular questions. What am I talking about? I'm talking about questions like setting expectations. What do you expect from me as a leader? And what do I expect from you as my direct reports or team, right? Um, what are some of the cultural norms? You talk about those things as a, as a group. You talk about what your perceptions might be of those cultural norms and you kind of start building that people connection with your team right then up right then and there and um, i'm doing that now at the zoo with some some new leaders and um, i think it's going to be great um, but really setting expectations of what you are as a leader what you expect from your team and understanding those cultural norms when you do that you avoid maybe not all but most cultural landmines as well and you kind of get an understanding of where the people pocket connections are right so those are some of the examples that, that i've done in the past and continue to do as a leader you you well it was you <laughs> in my head wednesday that's that's what happens y'all like i'm telling y'all i promise we do not script any no, of these conversations <laughs> that there's a level of what you just described there and again being the leader who asks good questions yes. where again you're curious about the other person and how they're showing up in a space mm -hmm. and and there's this phrase that i'm just new to learn around and shout out to coach uh coach dr joel perez who who is uh finish up his about to launch his book but this this idea of cultural humility yes right cultural humility that's right it, right and and like when mm -hmm. you hear that what what comes up for you wednesday it, that um, psychological safety, there it is. being safe in an environment where I can free to, freely be who I am at work, but also who I am. I'm bringing my whole self to work. So that psychological safety, um, cultural humility is, again, a compassionate heart. Right. Um, uh, the ability to connect, even though we have differences and how we work through those particular differences, um, those differences could be the way we manage, how we look at um, policies, but um, being able to go beyond those those roadblocks. That's what I see or my interpretation of cultural humility, that psychological safe place for me to be mm -hmm. who I am. Yeah. And, and, and immediately when. There And again, anybody who's been looking at psychological safety, again, in practice of is, yes. is what you were just describing is setting environments and setting an intention for us to really lean into the learning zone, if That's you will, right. of psychological safety. And it, again, that is a posture. That is a disposition that you like you have to have. And even if you're the person and, and also what was coming up for me as you were describing that is kind of the platinum rule over the golden rule right that's considering right considering how they want things not i'm leaning in from where i'm at because again right. if we're being honest it sound good brief well golden rule you know treat out others how you want to be treated but yeah. here's the thing that I'm coming to understand and in my research and in my in the practice of just human being in the world <laughs> is how often are we front loading the data that people actually need to treat us correctly? Mm. Mm. Right? We're not. We're, we're not. not. No, and so somehow, not. but but we're open with our, our offense. That's right but you weren't upfront and open about what people actually needed from a data standpoint to even know how to handle you well. That's right. Right? And so That's we're talking right. about authentic leadership in practice. It actually is a two way street. That Ooh, we, that's good. Right? That, yes. that if we're really going to be in the practice of it, then we have to model platinum ruling by actually telling people how you want to be treated that's right not believing that they're going to wake up one day and know what to do with you and and so we, as a leader how do you get people out of their heads to now be curious about another person's little little isms oh now you're getting into my uh getting into my self-awareness wednesday uh-huh <laughs> um
You know, that is difficult. And I think that's something also that I'm learning as a leader as well, right? Um, because I got to also get out of my own feelings and I got to step back, figure out what it is that I really want from this relationship, right? How I want to um, manage the relationship outside of how I feel about the relationship, right? And just go beyond that. But I think also that takes a lot of years of experience of having um, been in your feelings and managing from feelings rather than managing from um, a place that is kind of active, intuitive to what you actually want the results to be. Um, I can think of a situation I'm going through right now and it's the situation I've seen before in my career, right? But then I know how to navigate because of the prior experiences and really get to the results that I need from this person. So getting out my own feelings is one of the things. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> because and, and here's yep. the funny part, right? If we so so and, and I'm gonna bring in some something that people throw around, I believe so cavalierly this idea, this belief of work life balance, but Ooh. what I believe needs to be balanced, particularly if we're talking about being able to engage each other authentically, is balance processing. Yes. Of the environments that we're finding ourselves in. And what you were just describing is just that continuous improvement in that practice is. of, okay, why did I react that way to that? Uh -huh. And, and mm -hmm. begin to be conscious about the potential biases, mm -hmm. about the other group think things that we've mm -hmm. turned into, this is the way we do it here. Mm -hmm. And all mm -hmm. those other imbalance, like, oh, snap, we need to step back, take a time out, a quick pause or something, because people don't understand and oftentimes aren't conscious to the way we practiced and processed right. was imbalanced. And right. so now others are coming into these spaces. And I love that you mentioned those two leaders. They're, they're missing data points. They have their That's own right. set of data because mm -hmm. y'all hired them. They interviewed well, all the mm -hmm. rest of these things, but now it's like, okay, now we need to add to that. And That's so right. there isn't. And so what you don't understand and what you don't see is kind of people are trying to balance the old data with the new data. Mm -hmm. And, and if, oftentimes we're not even seeing that internal conflict. And That's now right. we're not even showing our leaders like Wednesday, like, hey, can I ask you a question? We're afraid to now say, like, I didn't really get it. I don't really get why y'all do that that way. Right. And, right. But in the back of my mind, they hired me to make decisions. That's right. And so when I do something and then you tell me it was wrong and now I got an attitude and but I but I don't want to be courageous enough pulling forward courage and authenticity. Now, I don't even want to be courageous to tell you like, hey, there I was operating off a of potential disconnect. Can mm -hmm. you help me? Can you help me? That's right. Right. We, we, we don't we don't um, we don't get to that point. Mm. We don't get to that point because of our feelings, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's a lot of static now in the mist and mm -hmm. you, go, you walk away, you're not productive with that relationship with that person. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it continues to be that pattern in that mm -hmm. sense. Right. Yep. Um, but it comes with experience. It comes with being self-aware. And let me mm -hmm. talk about a little bit about self-awareness. Self-awareness is being able to sit back, right. And examine our own strengths, our own weaknesses, um, examine our own feelings and what made us feel this way um, and kind of level us out, right? So to help us through those particular type of experiences, that self-awareness and understanding our values is really important too in that situation. How we make decisions. Are we making the same decisions? Um, have we made decisions like this in the past? You know, what is our decision-making process, right? So um, it's huge. It's huge. It's, it's yeah. really big. So, so for 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 the sake of redundancy, I want to pull for transparency <laughs> again, and the the relational currency that we do or don't have when it comes to being authentic. Mm -hmm. And there's an element I believe we we don't often talk about when it comes to how. And when we're we are fully authentic versus when we're kind of hedging a little bit, and it's it, to me building an environment of actual trust mm -hmm. when it comes to how I show up for another person. That's and right. so for you in in your in your roles and in, in particularly in your current role, what are you as a leader doing to foster, nurture, and grow? trust 
awesome question. Um, Stephen Covey has a program called Inspiring Trust. And by far, it is the best program in terms of inspiring trust that I have seen. And it talks about what a low trust and a high trust um, environment looks like, Lawrence. And um, in it, it has 13 characteristics of what a high trust relationship looks like. Some of those traits look like, um, are righting wrongs. So understanding when you have to right a wrong, being transparent, um, uh, listening is really key as well. And I rolled this out at, the, at Zoo Atlanta recently, and I let them um, talk about where they were at, in that particular um, function. And today, six months later, they used those 13 characteristics leading in their department meetings. My own HR managers now is, when I hear her talking, she's talking about Wednesday, that's a low trust organization, or that's a high, it's, it's connecting, right? And um, that program there is an amazing program. But I start with um, inspiring trust. And that's understanding one where the organization is showing them where they are and talking about those 13 characteristics, mm -hmm. transparency, righting wrongs, listening um, are just some of those. But um, that's what, that's where I start. I love yeah. it. And I'm mm -hmm. and I'm so glad you didn't say I motivate people to trust. They you can't motivate nobody. Oh no, you can't nothing. motivate. Um mm -hmm. but no. you, the the inspiration of trust. Like I love that as mm -hmm. as a practical aim and what I yep. love that your organizations you're putting the stuff into practice. Mm -hmm. It's not Absolutely. It's not a box you check, but it's, oh. and again, and I understand what you probably didn't say is the authenticity of the, the homework that has That's right. to go into play that actually has your leaders able to even use the language. Because when you That's give right. your organization shared language, shared mm -hmm. models to practice with each other, it's, yes. I mean, it's like a, it's a playbook. It is a playbook. That's why yes. sports teams have playbooks that they go over so when you're in the heat of it, when conflict comes up, you have the language that's, again, disarming. So you mm -hmm. could actually talk about the things that matter. That and matter. Oh, God, I love, it. Yes. Ah, I love yes. it. So it's a great program, man. Man, you got me geeked up and we could talk about leadership all day long. Um, <laughs> so so OK, so the people out there, if you gave them and they're saying, you know what, I'm I'm at the beginning, middle, or advanced stages. You pick the the area of expertise you want to give some advice to. What would be one piece of advice you would give someone to begin either sustaining authentic leadership or walking down the path? Good question. Um, let's see here. Know who you are. Know who you want to be in five years, who you want to be in 10 years. Know your why. Start with your why. You know, Simon Sinek says it all, uh, amazingly. Start with why. What is your why? What's your values? What are your core values? And know what those are. Um, get to know people. Connect with people in the smallest and greatest of ways. Um, I would also say understand what self-awareness and that, um, that emotional intelligence is. Understand those things. Those that those are some things I would say to start with. I love it. I love it. Yeah, that top box. Um, and, and one thing that I always give my students at Morehouse is lead from the inside out. Lead and, from inside out. Yes. Right. And so thank you so much for oh, thank just you. gracing us for a little bit of time. This is tip of the iceberg, y'all. And if you <laughs> don't know Wednesday, not connected with Wednesday, you're lacking. Um, and so to help people get up and stop lacking, how can people connect with you? Oh, great question. And I appreciate your time today. And it was a pleasure being here, Lawrence. Um, people can contact me. I'm always at the zoo. Zoo Atlanta is located right in East Atlanta. Come out and visit. Um, or you can contact me on my business number. It's 404-477-4437. Email me at getinfo at Wednesday. LaShellFerman.com, excuse me. Good stuff, Wednesday. And I'll make sure y'all have all of that information in the <laughs> comments and all the rest of those good things so you can reach out to Wednesday. And I'll tell you, a wonderful leader to have Thank as you. a resource you. <laughs> for yourself and your organization. Um, and so, y'all, always, 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 it's an absolute pleasure for your time and your attention um, with 
hot takes where we're always seeking to be humble, open, and transparent in all that we do. So until next time, y'all, be well, lead well, and we'll see you soon. All right.